When assessing a bone lesion, the most important factor to consider is the morphology and location of the lesion and the age of the patient. You should adopt a systematic approach to describing these x-rays. So in this video, we'll work through the SMEC-PH approach, and we'll apply this to some examples. SMEC-PH stands for Site, Size, Margins, Extent, Content, Periosteum, and Healing. We will now go through this approach applying it to various tumors. By the end of this video, you should be able, comfortable with describing bone lesions using this approach, and as a bonus, hopefully you're able to make a few diagnoses. The top row of these tumors labeled 1 to 3 are benign, and the bottom row are malignant tumors. You will hopefully have a better understanding as to why this is so by the end of this video. So the first S stands for site. First determine the location of the lesion. Is it in the perphysis, diaphysis, or the metaphysis? This is important as there are some lesions which usually involve certain regions, such as osteosarcomas, which are usually metaphyseal lesions. Figures 1, 3, 4, 6, and 7 are metaphyseal lesions. 2 shows an epiphyseal lesion with involvement of the metaphysis, and figure 5 shows a diaphyseal lesion. The second S is for size. Large lesions are usually indicative of malignancy. Just by looking at the x ray, we can say that lesions 1 and 5 are relatively small lesions in comparison to lesions 2, 3, 4, 6, and 7, which we can say are relatively large lesions. M is for margins. A well-defined lesion with sclerotic edge suggests that there's a host response occurring, therefore the lesion is likely benign. A lesion with a moth-eaten appearance implies malignancy. Figures 1 and 3 have well-defined margins, and you could maybe include figures 2 and 5 in that. The tumor seen in figure 5 is usually ill-defined. Figures 4, 6, and 7 are more poorly defined. Also note the sclerotic edges seen in figures 1 and 3 suggesting a benign process. E is for extent. Think malignancy if there's evidence of extra osseous involvement. There is likely extra osseous involvement in figures 4, 5, 6, and figure 2, which shows some locally aggressive behavior, as there is a wide zone of transition towards the marrow and an extension of the lesion to the metaphysis. C is for contents. The content of the tumor may be indicative of its origin and will assist in the making of a diagnosis. Lesions may appear to be lytic, that is darker or black on x-ray, fluid fold, where one may see the falling fragment sign suggesting a simple bone cyst, osteoid, that is containing bone, or they may be cartilaginous, which will only be visible if there's been calcification of the cartilage. So figures 1, 2, and 3 are lytic lesions, as they appear darker. Figures 5 shows a mixed lytic sclerotic lesion. Figures 4 and 7 shows an osteoid matrix, that is, a cloud-like appearance to them, whilst figures 6 shows a chondroid matrix or a popcorn appearance to it. The P stands for periosteum. The periosteum can appear to be solid, which suggests a slow-growing benign process, lamellated or onion peeling, which is typical of ewing sarcomas. It may have a sunburst appearance, suggesting an aggressive process such as osteosarcoma. The presence of a Codman's triangle suggests a very aggressive malignant process, also seen in osteosarcomas. A periosteal reaction is seen in figure 2 and 7. A sunburst appearance is seen in figure 4. There is also a speculated periosteal reaction in figure 5. A characteristic radiological feature of tumor number 5 is usually onion peeling. H is for healing. Sclerosis and healing of pathological fractures suggest that there is a host response and therefore it is a benign process. In the diagrams used, there is unfortunately no good example of this process. As previously mentioned, the tumors in the top row are all benign. Benign tumors are well-defined, sclerotic, less extensive, and usually do not interrupt the periosteum. As you can see, figure 2 is an exception to this rule, as it is an aggressive type of benign tumor. Benign tumors are usually classified as latent, active, or aggressive. So let's get to naming these tumors. Tumor 1 is a non-ossifying fibroma, tumor 2 is a giant cell tumor, and lesion 3 is a simple bone cyst. The bottom row are malignant tumors and are typically ill-defined, large, extensive lesions which have a periosteal reaction. Figure 4 and 7 shows an osteosarcoma, figure 5 shows a Ewing sarcoma, and figure 6 shows a chondrosarcoma.
In summary, we have applied the SMIC pH approach to various tumors and have looked at the radiological features that suggest a malignant or benign process. Remember SMIC pH, site, size, margin, extent, content, periosteum, and healing. <laughs>